Welcome to the NBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. This is the end, my January friend, in October. Oh. The end? Already? Ain't that a bit too early? <laughs> the end is near. Repent! Repent! <laughs> also joining us today is Jacob. Hey, everybody. Uh, this really isn't we're in the doldrums. Really? I felt this coming was pretty okay. Was it? Yeah, I mean, like, it had ponies, Uh-oh. it had colors, it has uh, words. It, it, it covers the comic spectrum, so yeah. <sighs> okay, let's get well, on. Now, now you've done it. Now now he's all he's all re- ready to argue with you. <laughs> uh, but before, before we start the argument and whatnot, uh, the audience at home needs to know what we're doing. And in today's comic, sorry, in today's episode review, we are going to review the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic issue number 101 and 102. Uh, it, it's a combined episode or it's a combined thing that, that, that stuff, yeah, combined. Because this is one huge issue for the end. <clears throat> So, um, in issue 101, uh, let's see, where is this? this, is, this is, uh, okay, mm, wait, what, what? Give me a second. Okay, in this issue, the Knights of Harmony arrives in Equestra to take the elements of harmony from the main six. Ooh, that's issue 101. And let me see. Uh, I'm going to save that one for later because it's kind of spoiler. So, anywho, Silver, what do you think? Well, I, it's a hard thing to sell because you only get two issues to really establish our villains. And there are conflicting philosophies at play, but no knowledge of the actual outcome, which is very frustrating. You have this, we're introduced to these uh, bearers of the elements of patriotism, which also serve to show the elements of nationalism mm-hmm. at play. But then we also have to hasten to their defeat. So I feel like we don't really get a chance to really flesh out the characters or get to know their true selves. Uh I I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Um, Is that all? For the moment, yeah. All right, then. Uh, Jacob, what about you? Well, this is the final culmination to which the past 10 issues have been building up to. And it unfortunately isn't very good for multiple reasons. And I have a feeling we might have a repeat of finale of Generations issue 5. If not from Norman, then certainly from me. Mm, Alrighty then. Um, As for me... I don't know what to say. Um... The comic starts off pretty good, uh, and the villain, they're threatening and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, um, but uh, as, as for this issue, it was okay. It was okay. Um, the pain comes later on. So, anywho, if you guys at home have not read this yet, pause your and go do so. Welcome back. Um, so we start off with, well, Twilight Sparkle trotting towards some place, uh, letting the other ponies know that Cantalot is under attack and you should go to the evacuation center. And talking about the evacuation center, we see the <coughs> um, element bearers do their job. Uh, Fluttershy and Miss Main... Um, Escort the animals to a place where they're safe. Um, it's main carrying plants and whatnot. And then we see um, uh, Maud and Starlight assure the kids to a safe spot. And, you know, there, there's a lot of uh, things going on. Uh, one thing that I need to point out is that, hey, it's Spike reading a book. And the book says, Dear Zakura, Kapper. Solano and Queen Jenny. Uh, Princess Twilight requests your emergency assistance. Hmm, that's a very strange book that he's reading. 
No one? No one? Just me? No, it's just you. Sorry, dude. I only have oh. one question. I'm gonna uh, repeat again what I did at the end of Wish 100. Why is Tejian here? He's like the most useless character in this case. You might as well replace him with Mayor Mer, who deals with bullshit on daily basis and shit do. Wow. <laughs> Wow, I, I, I feel the Stygian heat. Wow. Well, for a bloody good reason. <laughs> Why? Like, he's kind of adept. Oof. I mean, do, if the, do you want if to the go pillars on the tribe right now? I mean, like, he did... Huh. I, I'm just not feeling it. Like, usually I can feel the heat, but not for Stygian, no. Do you want me to explain myself? Or do we continue? You know what? I'm, I'm guessing a lot of people want to know. Alright. Uh, I just have this problem with Stygian and how people wrote him. How absolutely no blame is pinned upon him when his own actions have caused the entire events of Shadowplay to... Well... Play out. Like... The rest of the players... The rest of the pillars are absolutely justified in scorning him. I mean, I I don't know how you guys in the far west and the or the far east do things, but here in the south central Europe, it's common courtesy that even amongst friends, when we want to borrow something, we first ask in advance that per if that person is okay with it. And Stygian does exactly the opposite, probably because he didn't consider he didn't consider the pillars his friends. Something that becomes evident at the end of Legends uh, of Magic series. And I love that series, but the ending showed that there's a fundamental problem that nobody even tries to address. And uh, I, I kind of have to pull the voice uh, silver. I'm going to go with uh, voice of reason on this one, uh, the way he did in the, the, prince, uh, the Princess's Dream of Magic Sheep review that you did years ago. See... The crux, of, yeah. See, the crux of the entire conflict of Shadow Play was that Stygian wanted to be a hero for the sake of being a hero. Now, that's a villainous desire in and of itself, and you know what they say, a villain sees himself as a hero of his own story. Case of point Thanos, but the difference is that Stygian was a presence only once in the series and never again. Pillars of the Evil Decrestia weren't heroes because they desired to be... They became heroes because other people marked them as such. None of these ponies ever tried to, uh, to uh, n never wanted fame or fortune. The only thing they ever wanted was doing things that were virtuous and morally right, and not expecting nothing in return. But um, <clears throat> this basically shows that yes, Stygian sought. Uh, I mean, Stygian brought the pillars together, but he didn't see himself as their friend. They were people of great power, renown, and reputation, but. Who was he? A nobody. And he wanted to be special so he could see himself on equal level as them. <laughs> but the only reason that the pillars came together at all was because he wanted them to save his village from the sirens. If anything, uh, he mirrors Princess Luna's <laughs> falling away that he chose to surrender himself to his own inner darkness, same way as she did. But he never owned up to his actions. No, it's all uh, no boomer's fault, whatever. Now, Silver, um, you've got a big fr profile in the community. You've probably never um, been short on people coming face to face with you uh, on the conventions. Possibly breaking down, crying and saying, Oh God, <laughs> I'm not worthy to stand your presence type of reactions. Mercifully, that doesn't happen often. Well... Well, basically... And happens. if it does, I try to put a stop to it right away. I'm a schmuck on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> well, the same is the case, the case for Stygian. I mean, other pillars saw him as a friend, but he couldn't see himself as one because he was a nobody. He had no special powers. And the writers hmm. of Season 8 and 9 actually tried to put some effort into it. We could have had a great redemption story where a character recognized that he fucked up out of the lack of self-importance who thought that he deserved to be a hero and then he became a hero because he earned it without wanting to be one. And that's basically my beef with Stygians in the nutshell. Silver, 
Um, I, I'm guessing you and me don't see you. You and me are have the same point on this because uh, well, you you articulate your view. I'll see if I have a different. In all honesty, like I feel like he already owned up to his mistakes. Um, granted, this has been a while, and oh, man, like I'm trying to remember certain points of why I personally think that he owned up to his mistakes and whatnot. Granted, yes, um, if we're going to go step by step from what I can remember stuff, like, yes, he did, quote unquote, borrow the <coughs> pillar's tools without asking, but he always had, he always wanted to copy them uh, just to keep them, uh, to have at least a copy for prosperity six and whatnot. Granted, he should have asked first, but uh, he didn't. Be- Why didn't I'm sure, see? like, you're asking me. I got no idea. I'm not Stygian. <laughs> Plus, it's been so many years. Like, it's been so many years since I last read the issue and saw the episode. Or from what I can. You're not writer for the one who wrote the story either. Yeah, so, like, um, also, granted, this is your feelings on Stygian. So, whatever I'm going to say is not going to change your mind. <laughs> So I'm I'm not here to change your mind, my friend. <laughs> so anywho, but uh, if you sorry? but if you want to change your mind, you can do so for the low low price of nine ninety five. <laughs> yes, but no, uh, Stitch St- had good intentions going in, but it's just that he lacked the self confidence that he has, and at points when he had the confidence, Star Soul the jerk always put him down. And that's where he felt like he wasn't up to par with the group. And the group also thought that, hey, Stijan is a cool guy, um, but yeah, we will probably talk to him later. We'll, we'll probably talk to him later because we, we have tough stuff to do. And that's what put him down because um, their friends not really um, backing him up when Star Soul the Jerk didn't really, when Star Soul the Jerk put him down. So when you take a look, see, like, yes, uh, the elements are always there, the six of them. But Stygian is the stratagem, uh, strategist for the group. That's always been his shtick. So that that there is uh, his thing. And later on, uh, he wrote a book about his trials and tribulations saying that, oh, um, this is what happened and uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm guessing it's a autobiography by him. Yes. This could put them down because all I remember is Star Soro say, uh, saying, What special skill do you have to offer? And he said, and Stygian replied that he had nothing, that he's not special. But and Star Soro the... said, that, That's okay, boy, not there, you want a special. Yeah, but that's the thing. Star Soul the jerk, is a jerk. He is special. He got them all together. He managed to look at the clues, figure things out, and went there. And. Gather the group. That's the thing. He was the one responsible for gathering. Do you think Star Soul the Jerk could have done that? No. He's but an then, asshole. But then again, he didn't uh, know that uh, other uh, pillars even actually exist. He thought they were yeah, but that's the thing. So that's the thing. He's living up his own world. He's um, there not really looking at the outside while Stygian was. Yeah, but again, just because you're not special doesn't mean you get to just <laughs> do whatever yeah but that's that's his this, fault there as he admitted giving, it this is giving me the, uh, the no that, that's the thing that, like uh, yeah that, that's the thing but silver what do you think well i do agree that stygian was the strategist of the group and that he basically wouldn't acknowledge his own skills uh so in, in many ways it's both the fault of himself and also the pillars for getting too swept up in the praise. They did get a lot of praise for what they did. Uh, I mean, I enjoy him. I liked him in the uh, Nightmare Nights series, where I feel like he had the most interaction. But then again, they should have brought him when they were when the Pillars fought T-Rex, because he could readily have told them, don't let him steal your magic. Mm-hmm. That's priority one. But nope, they left him out for some reason. Well, how else would so they usually be defeated then? Because it was like a 20-minute show. Mm. 
But that's the problem. If if your story justification for leaving a guy out is, oh, he would solve the problem willy-nilly, uh, then you better come up with just a better reason than that for why he's not there. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we all like or dislike characters for various reasons, and... I like Stygian, but I can see why he would turn people away, too. If there is at least some sort of short story where he actually tried to hold up to what he did instead of just all the blame being passed on the pillars, even though they were justified in doing it. But, well, whatever, it is what it is. I think you've heard me enough of bemoaning right now, so I think we can continue. Oh, yes, we've got, we've got far more to introduce. Yep, yep. And Stygian is just... A footnote in this. <clears throat> so, anywho, uh, we see Twilight heading to the palace asking Mage how is Rainbow Dash. And Rainbow Dash is okay. She's just a bit tired and had a bad fall. And yeah, with a bit of rest, she will recover. But uh, before Ray- Rainbow Dash could rest up and... Um, <clears throat> what you call this before Rainbow Dash could rest up uh, the gang is all here and they all kind of just crap on all Celestia and Luna like ab- what uh, like Spike just says um, sorry you know Ra- Rarity I think yeah Rarity just says why did Luna and Celestia have anything like this um, Spike just says yeah it seems like even though Cantalot was always getting attacked no one ever knew what to do Applejack just says, yeah, you think that that's why they were always getting beat them up, kidnapped, or turned into stone. <laughs> and before uh, anybody can rebut, uh, there's a rumble going on, and we see that the place is raining? Question mark? Actually, the water's coming coming from underground. Ah, I see. Okay, so there's a geyser. Mm, that's not natural. So the main well, six technically for, geysers are natural, but uh, for Candlelot it's not because it's up in a hill. Is that possible? Anything's possible, but this is a, a bit too specific. Mm. But anywho, <clears throat> we see that shining armor came along and as Twilight that. Or tell Twilight that, hey, there's somebody in a big scary robe at the edge of the barrier and wants to talk to you. And Twilight just says, all right, I'll bring my friend along. And Shining Armor just says, no, you're supposed to come alone. All right, okay, (laughs) bye. Uh, I guess nothing bad's going to (laughs) happen. So, anywho. Can I just say something before we continue? All right, go ahead. It's funny that Spike is... uh, uh, over there, badmouthing uh, Celestia and Luna over there, other way, and forgetting the, fir- and the first uh, issue of the series, or rather the four parter, where he basically participated in uh, freeing Cantor Lot from a bunch of giant mutant uh, cockatrices, along with Celestia. True, but at the same time, too, if I'm not mistaken, a lot of people were hurt in the process. Like, this is just them trying to sh- crap on uh, them because they didn't have a system where, okay, um, we're going to be under attack, everybody follow the line here, and so on. Speaking of which, why, are, why aren't Luna and Celestia <coughs> here? They're in Florida. Where were they again? Florida? <laughs> Silver Shoals. Yeah, but they, they, they say something else. Like, there, there's a billboard that says, uh, thinking about retiring? Consider. <laughs> what was it again? Um, I'm trying to look for that billboard. Give me a second. Yes. Uh, Foldida. <laughs> You'd think that considering it's Wait. basically a catastrophic event on a massive scale that they'd be called to help. Nah, man, it's their time to work. Like, we, we did our part. <laughs> it's their turn. Oh, I see. So they're pulling the tree beard maneuver. Yeah, we know the word is out there, but uh, it's not our war. 
I mean, in all honesty, you know, in all honesty, it would be great to have the two sisters again. But the two sisters decide that, you know what, it's time for Twilight to learn. Like, she needs to learn from her experience. Like, yeah, but this isn't really about learning anymore, no, as much as it wasn't, like, uh, with the end of the end. It's about doing now. Get to it. Nothing to it but to do it. Yeah, they'll say later in the morning. And that's CDP. Like, that's why I brought up Stygian because he's there, but the two ponies who have more power than, than anyone else except for Twilight and uh, <laughs> Star's World, but they don't come to what, what the... <laughs> save their former home. Uh, just, just to troll you, Jacob, what does that say about Celeste and Luna? What about? <laughs> they're useless. They're not even. They're not taking the initiative to help Sequestria. <laughs> Were they even called? Do you need to call? Do you need to be called to save Equestria? <laughs> Look at Stygian. He was just there. <laughs> That's just dumb. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the <laughs> Yes. Because a whole lot of stupid <laughs> happens right in the next page. Ah, yes. <laughs> stupid. <laughs> so, hey! <laughs> Give me a second to compose myself. That was just dumb. <clears throat> okay, here I am. Okay. So, anywho, Twilight meets with the scary, spooky person in the robe and is revealed to be. Uh, um. Danu. Uh, Tenu of Kun uh, Kunabula. Hmm. But I'm trying to think, what is he specifically? <laughs> he is a Lucrota. Oh, a what? Uh, L e u c r o t a, Lucrota. Other names: uh, Korokara, Krukoti, Lucrokuta. A composite beast with a mouth that stretches from ear to ear. Uh, obviously, he's not flexing his muscles right now. Huh. It's a swift beast that lives in India. Mm. Uh, see here. They claim it's the, it's the result of mating between a hyena and a lioness. Mm. But it shares features of both. Sorry, Silver. Where it, did you get the info from? Like, uh, I'm just trying to check the wiki and I get nothing. Well, part of this is when I posted a review on Equestria Daily of this, I've tried to figure out each beast. Uh, you can't see it with the robe he's wearing, but Danu appears to be part horse, part lion. Huh. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, I, I kind of and, get the horse part because of the cutie mark flank thingy. No, the the front. Yeah, that that's, looks like a horse. And the lion part, I do get. So almost like a hippogriff. Your version of Hippogriff. Uh, well, here's the thing. All of the Knights of Harmony are themselves uh, composite beings named for uh, for various gods. Danu is the Celtic mother uh, or goddess of the earth. And even his uh, Kunabula it name means cradle or origin. Huh. So wait, um, all this you got from your write-up on EQD? I researched what I could find and people clued me in on what I couldn't. Ah, cool, 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 cool. Okay, because uh, Lucrota, or yeah, Lucrota, the creature itself, is a D&D creature too. Hmm. May have a similar origin. Uh, probably, I don't know. Um, this is the first time I heard of it, and my DM didn't really pull this one on out on us. Well, I don't know what to tell you, other than, well, we're going to get an introduction to all the Knights of Harmony very shortly. Only one of whom goes completely unnamed. Is that so? Huh, okay. So, anywho, um, I'm just going to kind of hit in. So, anywho, um, Danu of Kunabula is the leader of the Knights of Harmony. Um, Twilight here just says, the Knights of Harmony? Wait, um, aren't you guys supposed to be a thousand-year-old myth and whatnot? 
And Danu here just says like, how little you know. And Twilight just says, then, I want to understand. Like, tell me. Like, explain it to me. Like, yeah. Oh, no, you got, you got to say like, Yugi, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Danu just says, okay, um, sure. We have a trade. I tell you everything and you want to know. You give me the elements of harmony. And Twilight just says, nah, we, we can't do that. The elements were destroyed a while back ago and their power kind of absorb into us. Oops. And Danu just says, ah, yes. Mm -hmm. That's that's unfortunate. I guess we have to kill you then. No hard feelings. <laughs> uh, that was being <laughs> an unreasonable Rita right now. Hand over the old Hand over what we want to explain why we're doing this. Like, why? What's the difference going to be if he tells you now or later? This feels like it's just trying to postpone to postpone the explanation to make a dramatic reveal in the next issue, which, by the way, that is the case. And then he I mean... has the nerve to say, Don't you understand why we might destroy you? <laughs> no! No, nothing no, was explained. You didn't explain er anything. Like, he's just standing there acting all high and mighty, Paul, but all it does is make him look like an unreasonable idiot. That is also true. I agree with that statement there. Uh, yeah, I mean, oh man, like... I, I don't know. I mean, Danu doesn't really explain stuff in the 101 issue. So we're kind of like in, in Twilight's boots here saying like, uh, why? Like, you didn't explain anything to us. Like, I'm still confused why you want to destroy the elements and crap. I mean, me and my friends here could kick your butt anytime you want. And I've been outreaching to other countries. They're our allies and friends. They'll be here in a few hours. So you guys be trashed. And Danu just says, Ironic. That was the same thing that nearly brought the downfall of our country. Now, it will bring the downfall to yours. And it is revealed that, okay, gang, line up and let's reveal our... Let, let's take off our robes and reveal who we are. And... <laughs> yes, and... And for dramatic effect, I shall pulverize the ground and teleport us to the other side. Haha, -ha, I have done it. Now, fight! <laughs> so yeah, we get to see the ponies fight. Um, uh, Boys, uh, this is just fun. So anywho, um, Twilight goes to her brother saying that um, peace has... Uh, peace was not an option. Now, um, um, throw them, throw, throw fist and go fist the cuffs. By the way, um, notice here that Twilight calls herself a queen. That's very fascinating. And it's just this one line. Is she? Hold on. <clears throat> yep. You don't have to do this. As queen, I've been trying to reach out to other countries. We want to be friends. Oh. Oh, yeah. I completely slipped my mind. Is just with one line? Is that one line? <clears throat> it's just that one line, but it, I mean, Twilight is a queen. She is the ultimate authority now in Equestria. Yeah, mm -mm. <sighs> but Silver, I, I, don't you know that queens are evil? <laughs> she must be a princess because princesses are always good. <laughs> Facetious, I see. Well, maybe Twilight's trying to embrace her dark side, too. Get a little bit of her inner tyrant on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Silver, don't go there. <laughs> oh, I'll go there. But anywho. <clears throat> but anywho. Um, we see um, the ponies marching on. Um, I, I like the banter between... Um, sh sh uh, uh, God, Tempest and also Shovel Boy. Rock Hoof. Uh, Yes, Rock Rock Hoof. Hoof. Uh, the, the, I love the interaction they have. That they, was kind of cool because like, ha, huh, I can take two of them if you can take uh, the other four. And Rock Hoof just says, ha, 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 I'll take them on and leave nothing for you. Ha, ha, that's how arrogant and strong I am. <laughs> and uh, we, we see um, uh, Flyboy, whose name is... <laughs> Oh god. 
fly boy? There's no flies. Oh, wait, you mean Flash Mac? Yes, yeah, Flash, yes. Flash and Big Mac are interacting. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So anywho, um, the ponies attack and the knights reveal themselves. We have a quote-unquote samurai. Uh, we have a gypsy fortune teller person. I got no idea. And... Hmm? A mogul. Mughal, I guess. There's a Mughal Empire. Oh, okay. Um, don't really know. But anywho, um, the Tyrannus, ta- ta- Tyrannus, uh, yes, the samurai-looking person, uh, cross between a bull and a snake, is well known for his wind puns. Ain't that right, Silver? Yes, but they often just blow. <laughs> yeah, they're not cut they're, they're not the um upper crust thing i don't know i'm not good at oh puns. no norman you let that breeze right past i know it just went over my head but something, anywho well, something i don't get why were the disguises necessary like the jig was already up in uh, issue 100 so why bother and try to conceal anything because even if you do it for the audience sake it really doesn't work when you basically put into one of the Knights of Harmony on full display what she looks like. But we haven't really uh, been revealed to the others yet. I don't know. If she was concealed herself, tried to be a bit more menacing, maybe this would, it would have been a better effect. But uh, I don't oh. know. Also, I should mention that uh, he is from Greek mythology and. Ophiotaurus. Ophiotaurus, really no. A snake bull hybrid. And he and he is named for the Celtic god of thunder. Ophiotaurus. Not getting it in spelling. Alright. Well, no I'll send it. Uh, <laughs> so anyhow. Um, basically uh, this uh, cow snake guy is the same that Chrysalis basically uh Tempted when uh, she uh, she tear it and cause the went to find Brod as well. In all honesty, um, I, I I kind of enjoy the pony version than what Jacob just posted on Discord. That just is. Mm, I'm not gonna sleep well tonight. Yeah, and also that thing was well more animalistic, so I don't understand why this why this one is well sentient. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But more oh, to boy. the point, he is apparently the element of pride. Mm-hmm. No, I forgot no, about that. Yes, just no, no. Pride's not a virtue, so why is he one of the elements? And neither is acceptance or wait, is it tolerance? I acceptance. I, I, I'm not sure about this one. Well, if he, if you're going for uh, elements of patriotism, then yeah, you taking pride in your home. Taking pride in your culture. Mm-hmm. The problem is that you take it too far and you become arrogance. Oh, oh, oh. Um, don't want to um, insult anybody, but you could be America. Well, that's where the elements of uh, national of uh, patriotism stretch too far and become the elements of nationalism, of which, den- of which uh, the United States is a pretty good example. True. Yeah, but I'm uh, gonna argue that America's idea of what nationalism is, or at least what Jeremy Whitley is trying to show here, is uh, not not what n- actual nationalism is. Like, hold on, uh, let me just get because I wrote it down somewhere. The question, like, uh, uh hold on, give me a second. Uh, uh, <coughs> While you do that, I'll try to move forward for a bit. Ah, so, okay, okay. So, uh, the whole angle of nationalism, I don't think it just it works because it's implying that nationalism is synonymous with isolationism. And this seems to be... Uh, I don't know. Much like the Abyssinia arc, it feels like this, and this is hinting at the quote-unquote current year problem. So I'm not too good at American history, but wasn't America since its early inception pretty much isolated from world affairs and 
um, as in not getting uh, itself involved in European world politics. I'm not familiar with that. Well, I think that could after, be because after of the revolution the... it became uh, independent from uh, British. Wasn't it like uh, isolated from uh, European politics because, well, for for the better, considering what uh, shit went down after the <laughs> revolution over there? Well, I think they still had to be aware, at least, of what's going on, but my history is not as strong. Oh, okay, never. From, from what I understand of American, quote-unquote, American history, is that um, America has always been has always been um, by it to itself, not really trying to get involved into others' problem until the World War Two. when... Actually, World War I. One. I'm, I'm tr- I, I don't really remember because history is not my strong point. But yeah, uh, until they got dragged into it, and they, yeah, I mean, like, okay, if you want us in, like, yeah, we, we'll go in and da. I wish they didn't stick that nose into that one because the world will be better place in that case. Eh, I don't know. Like I say, history is not my strong point. But anywho, yeah. I'm going to continue on. Yeah, but basically what I mean, uh, it doesn't matter if it's point of nationalism, patriotism, pride's simply not a virtue, no matter how good you put it, because it's the most insidious one. Mm, I mean, if they're talking about, like, patriotism for country... I can see why they're doing this, because they're they're protecting their land. They're doing a preemptive strike, and they're learning from their past mistakes. So I mean, I'm I'm all over the place right now, and we haven't even gotten to the fight yet. So I'm gonna stop right there and just continue on. <clears throat> yeah, go on. So, okay. So anywho, um, squid shark person uh, can control water because she's acceptance. What? Don't care because she just does um, power gazers all over the place. And the, what you call this, um, guards are thrown about. Then we have uh, Danu, who is the element of. Wait, um, uh, straightforward strength of. Uh, he is the element of loyalty, right? Yeah. yeah. And he controls the power of Earth. And some of the knights are trapped where Cadence was. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's great. Mm-hmm. Great. Does it explain why he controls Earth? And then we have a two-page spread where we see the fight going on. Uh, Flash Magnus is being attacked by geysers. Um, Ty- Tyrannus is fighting uh, Shadow with uh, lightnings and whatnot. Uh, we see Big Mac fighting the bird creature thing um we have a stare down between flash no not flash but um shining with the scottish person thingy we were talking about before and uh rock hoof is beating up some rocks thrown by danu <clears throat> And this, then uh, this speech sorry? kind of bothers me. I mean, Tony Cusisto is a good artist, but I think Catchin's probably one of his weak points. That look at this two-page spread. It's, I don't know. It feels kind of static. It's kind of, but it does send the message that uh, you have a few bad guys, quote unquote bad guys, uh, fighting the main cast, and. Uh, I, I just noticed that I missed one and he's really well hidden in the back. If you didn't really notice the character, you won't notice him or it kicking ass and kind of wiping the flow out of the guards. So, mm, pretty smart. He's giving them bell wa- bad wipes. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But anywho, uh, we, we see uh, Big Mac saying, come on, hold still and fight me. And... The creature's name is Swin, uh, Sir, Sir Dwin, Sir Dwin, Sir Dwin. And he, uh, it represents the element of equality. And equity. this fight, equity, equity, really. Equity is not a virtue, equity is not a virtue either. In business it is. <laughs> so, um, he kinds of, um, makes Big Mac tiny and, I just like the 
panels here because oh no, Big Mac is small. Whatever we do, we see a shining armor fighting uh, something and says that oh, you have very impressive magic. Um, my name is Beller and stuff. But if you didn't really pay attention, oh, person's licking tongue. Oh, did 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 did, did the burp thing eat Big Mac? Oh no. <laughs> Oh, that's not good. That's not PC. <coughs> but no, no, that's just a slip of the mind. Uh, it's just that uh, Balor has the element um of magic, and magic is my element. Okay, he uh, it has the element of magic, and it kind of took shining armor's magic away. Uh, we see the other ponies get beaten up, and. Now we get to the part where Ghost Pony, Mor Morrigan, Mor Morrigan, the elements of fate. And it's doing the mind control thingy. And oh no, the whole crew is um, being mind controlled by this creature. And oh no, that's bad. While that's going on. Um, Twilight managed to gallop all the way to the castle and warn uh, the ponies that, oh no, um, the ponies are coming after us and they want to destroy us because we embody the power, the element of harmony and stuff. But also, uh, Mage Meadowbrook here just says, wait, does that include us? Because we kind of embody the elements and stuff. And uh, they just realized, oh no, the student six, they're also part of the elements. We need to... Uh, get to them and make sure they're safe. But before they could do that, the ponies, the bad guys, are already sieging the castle and tell them there's no way to go. And the student's already there. Cool, very convenient. And we end the comic here. Ooh. And now, um, Danu will explain the story of why am I such a dick? <clears throat> Well, before we cut to the chase, let's turn back, back to, uh, wait, what's her name again? More again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from Arthurian legends. The name, but, um, looking at her design, she feels more of, um, Native, Native American. American? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Faith, <laughs> I don't know if it fits this context because it might as well be replaced with loyalty because she basically forces everybody to switch their loyalty to, into the side of the knights. <laughs> I just say the element of mind control. <laughs> yeah. uh, freaky, freaky mind control. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's just the I mean, effect. That's so cool, by the way. I mean, mind control freaks me out on a good days, but man, her her approach. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. But anywho, yeah. uh, Jacob, why? Perhaps now, yeah. Perhaps now you will just stand help. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <clears throat> Perhaps now you'll stay put long enough for me to tell you a story. Excuse me, he had he had plenty of times to and plenty of time to do that back at the bear, but he instead chose to immediately attack. But now he's again act, again acting high and mighty as if they they're the ones at fault that he didn't explain himself. I mean, like, um, um, Danu is inconsistent in his logic. I'll say that. Danu is inconsistent with his logic. <sighs> All right. Well, let's continue the inconsistency as they are about to win these nights. Yep. But anywho, be before we continue on with the SmackDown, we go back in time. Once upon a time, we, they, Danu's people, uh, Kanambula had a kingdom full of beautiful stuff and Kanambula was the pride uh, was a paradise and it was protected by the Knights of Harmony uh, it seems that their ancestors looked like them very troubling so anywho uh, their element is called the element of patriotism yeah so, they have uh, magic, equity, faith, pride, acceptance, and most important of, and most important of all is loyalty. Mm -hmm. 
and they want to spread their uh, spread what they know, spread the lesson and whatnot, and go across the globe to teach their ways to the others. And yay, hey, uh, they went to the zebra lands. They went to the cat town, the dog world, and also um, bird lands. And yeah, they, they 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 taught them stuff and whatnot. And then when they head to Equestria, thinking that hey, um, this will be a new place to kind of have fun, uh, they they met up with Discord. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! And by the way, this is Norman. Jerky Discord. Norman, mm -hmm. can I express my thoughts? Go in ahead. A song? No. <laughs> Go ahead. Ooh. Okay, but I'm gonna need you to insert who else but Quagmire in the background. Oh God! <laughs> <clears throat> who else but Discord? His Discord, his Discord. Whenever something goes wrong, it's always his fault. His Discord, his Discord. Cause, 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 cause he's a dick. <laughs> giggity. Giggity, <laughs> boys. Yep. It. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boys, I was not expecting that to kind of appear. So, yes. Uh, when the knights landed on Equestria, they meet up with Discord, and Discord was a dick. Um, kind of... I'm I'm just puzzled by this. Like, I, I'm just curious. Uh, throw out ideas if you have some. But when in the timeline is this? A thousand years ago, something like that. Probably give or take, right? Yeah. Yep. Give or take. Uh, and and uh, even if we're talking about car uh, the comics logic, there also is the deer, uh, the cat people. Oh, wow, that that that, uh, that that falls apart very fast. Yep. So also, wait, silver silver. Do you maybe know what? The Harvey Grimm is because I'm seeing this recording holding a uh, magazine over there. What's a the reference to that? Har Harvey Grimm? Grimm. The comic. I think it's a comic. It's formatted like a I comic. haven't read that one. No, no. Um, this card's holding a comic. Like It's called Harvey Grimm. Double M. <clears throat> In the panel. I'm... I'm not sure. Let me do a quick search around. All right. While you do that, I'll just power through. So, anywho, um, this court kind of whispers sweet nothing to the ears of the animals. And that somehow started a civil war where the cat, dogs, and zebras go attacking the uh, country of Canambula. Canambula, yes. Uh, they go attacking the country of Canambula. And... Uh, fearing for their safety and whatnot, the knights go back to the place where they establish all of the elements and try to destroy them, but the elements were too strong. So instead of destroying them, they made them lost to time, uh, like burying the city of the cats, uh, burying the, the temple to uh, in the zebra land and also putting a very freaky animal. Uh, also, just hiding the elements underground in a cavern somewhere in the dog city. Um, doesn't say anything about the birds. I guess that's their own history. What? I forgot. Why do birds suddenly appear? Blue well, birds were the ones that... Uh, <laughs> How to put it? Left the nest the moment where they discovered something was going wrong. The reason why the lights <laughs> were turning off was because the knights were basically turning air, uh, making all the temples disappear, and they preemptively moved it away before it was their turn. Mm, so basically, they didn't really finish teaching the birds to do stuff then. Well, no, birds just reacted to the warning because they saw those five lights that acted this. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, <laughs> As a sign oh. the, in which temples were active. But at the same time, too, there's always been one, one, right? Just one? Yeah, yeah? yeah that was from the knights themselves. Yeah. 
So, anywho, Silver, any update on that thing that you search? Let's see here. There's a Harvey Grimm in the 1940 census, but no, that's not quite it either. There's an overbunch of Grimm's. <clears throat> I, I, it's okay, I guess. Anywho, um, and I guess the right. Brothers Grimm is going on. But anywho, continuing on, um, and just to add more salt to the wound, uh, the city of Kanamila has been invisible away, so nobody could go there and pose a threat to them. Ooh. Except the only person who knew where it was. It's not even there. It's like Temascara. Yay. <laughs> so, anywho, continuing on. Uh, and that's the reason why we are doing this. We are preemptively defending our country and taking out all of the elements of harmony before they can hurt us. Does that explain anything? Is that good? Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, can we just, uh, skip back um, backwards to the start of this issue? Go okay. ahead. Uh, I want you to take a good look at the knights. Uh, that are now on full display here and the first thing you'll notice is that their aesthetics do not match in any way whatsoever and i'm not talking just about them being random creatures uh it's what basically silver pointed out at the start but we didn't we didn't see them all actually i can't uh, i'm having a hard time believing that uh, there are this many diverse cultures in a single small island release, but well i want you to look at what they're wearing uh, you'll notice that uh, the uh, what is it called? Danus uh, looks like a Roman, complete mm -hmm. with the what? What's it called? The Roman uh, toga. Reef. Ah, Roman yeah. reef. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The the ox snake looks like a Japanese samurai. Then is the the Aztec lady. Uh, the squid shark thing that looks like something out of the Indian subcontinent. And, uh, well, you, you know what uh, these uh, four have in common? Well, if you can't remember, let me remind you what we had a discussion at the end of the previous issue when we were talking about uh, Rudyard, sorry, Rudyard Kipling's poem. Those, these cultures that they're portraying were at, what, at one point an em uh, empires. And while the Scottish and the Native Americans weren't empires themselves, they were part of an empire. So, mm. uh, <clears throat> Silver, you already have about half a horse, a horse under you, so why don't you make like Paul Revere and sound your American rallying cry? <laughs> oh no. Buy a new car! Buy a new car! <laughs> oh no. No, uh, I said Paul I... Revere, come on! I never noticed that. Ah, now that you mention it, yeah. it does make sense that yeah. the only thing in common that they have is they kind of have a huge empire. Hm. Yeah. So yeah, but, this is basically where... Yeah, what? But it's kind of a reach. Like, doing so, like... Oh, man. Uh, but yeah, it kind of fit the nationalism or patriotism thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, but empires predate nationalism <coughs> and patriotism. But uh, yeah, so this is this is finally where we get revelation. The the reason the Knights are pissed off is because this guy. Because of course, who else has thought it, it is? But he's when something gets fucked oh, up on a global uh, scale. <laughs> here's the thing: they're not pissed off at this court. They kind of how do you put this? Uh, this court was the seed of chaos. That kind of made things not fun anymore and uh well he's he's basically the reason that everything went down to begin with true but at the same time too um that scared the what you call this um conambulums to kind of close the borders as they say well yeah <laughs> uh let me uh continue what i had what i <laughs> what i meant to say what bothers me though is, do you recall what happened in Return of Harmony? Do you remember how Discord defeated the main six? He basically had to split them apart and then corrupt them each individually because when he tried to do it later when they were together, they were guarding one another from him. So 
what bothers me is the fact that Discord apparently somehow knew the locations of all these other trees of harmony and its people and turned them on the knights. Since they were fully fledged elements, that shouldn't be possible. I just say it's Discord. You don't really want to question his logic. I mean, it's Discord. Yeah, uh- I, I get it, don't question logic with this guy, but you should question logic with uh, every, everybody else. So what bothers me even more is the common trend that I've noticed uh, in the writing and it's uh, the destruction of absolutes. Now, I'm gonna wait a moment for somebody to make the obvious joke on that one. Uh, About um, absolutes. Over my head. <laughs> Nobody? They're absolutely amazing. Nobody really. Nope. Okay. Joke about absolutes? No. <clears throat> Not even once. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. Oh, that. <laughs> That's not a joke. Yeah. <laughs> no, but the writing was. <laughs> yeah. True. Right, now let me get, make an example of what I mean about destruction of absolutes. Now, see, in Warcraft Universe, there was originally this constant prevalence of Holy Light and the Paladins. They were the bastions of virtue. The Light was a force of absolute good. Meanwhile, in the world of Warcraft, another force was introduced. It was called the Void, and from it, the Old Gods were spawned, aka Lovecraftian horrors, who were basically gigantic parasitic mountains of flesh that corrupted everything with madness. And as such, they became a symbol of absolute evil. However, as time passed, writers started to change things, coming up with things like light's not absolute good and voice not absolute evil kind of mental kind of thing, despite prove um, prove the contrary. So they started to basically introduce characters in order to force the change of that mentality. Like for example, introducing an inno- innocent, faithful follower of the light, who in twenty years time time skip became a little Hitler who basically indiscriminately killed anyone who didn't accept the light. And I'm pretty sure that, Norman, you play a lot of D&D, you're up to date with the latest things, and I'm pretty sure they've been doing something similar in current current policy with Mm. no race is evil by nature. Uh, no, no. There, there's evil. There, there is evil in uh, the nature, yes. There there actually, there is a few... um, yeah, there's three: uh, lawful evil, neutral evil, and chaotic evil. Three evil, yeah. There, there is evil. What, it's just that. What uh, do works count as? Hmm. What do works count as? Works? What do you mean? Or, orcs, what orcs. Are, what are they considered? Uh, orcs. Chaotic evil. Ah, well, okay. There you go. Well, why am I telling you this? Because. One of the things that pissed me off about season 10, especially in this two-parter, is that the writer is trying to say that Harmony is not a force of absolute good, despite throughout the entire series that was never proven. So seeing the elements of Harmony being used to invade others' home and destroy them is something that I found find absolutely appalling. I mean, I didn't catch that part. Like, I, I didn't feel like, oh, uh, they... The the elements were used for evil. No, it's just that the elements were just Tonight? what? Yeah. No, it just says like uh, they don't want the elements to be used against them. That's all they've been saying. I mean, they never say uh, that it was evil or not. It was just used against them. They don't want to. They don't want it to be a tool that somebody else could. Ha- okay. Uh, the best. Uh, uh, the best analogy or the worst analogy for this is like, okay, um, I have a nuclear weapon and I feel like you two should have a nuclear weapon because you're my friends. Oh no, Silver, why are you arming your nuclear weapon to attack me? That's not cool. Now I... But I have zero impulse control! <laughs> so now I have to uh, take back those nuclear weapons. Oh no, they're too powerful. I, I can't. So let me just bury them underground so you your, your future generations won't get them. So... There's always been the, uh, what you might call this, the um thing that I took away from the comics or this story. Like, oh no, um, it's just that we don't want other people to have 
the Magic Rainbow powers. Yeah. Well, uh, we're gonna get back to those nukes in, in a few seconds, but you say that, but then uh, throughout the comic, they're gloating how they're gonna destroy Equestria. But here's the thing: uh, their sense of uh, give me a second to remember what. Okay, patriotism um, says that oh uh, yeah, we're better than you, and we're gonna make sure that Equestria is destroyed so that you won't be able to use the elements against us. There's always but been... The elements are, but the elements of uh, Harmony are supposed to symbol, symbolize absolute good. They never did say that. Are you saying that Harmony is not absolute good? No, I'm just saying that they never said that. They never mentioned it being good or evil. It's just that their twisted mindset just says that, hey... We are just protecting what we love, which is our country, uh, our sense of um, patriotism. And having other people risk that is bad. So we are doing a preemptive strike to stop that. I don't know. It just doesn't sit well, well with me. Because oh, that's the just... thing. That's the, that's the thing about a story where there's the, the antagonist is lawful good. <laughs> That's the thing. Because, is um, he lawful good? Yes. Because they're more like idi lawful idiots. <laughs> uh, you, you say that here because it's presented that way. But when you think about it, when you think about it, like each, like um, you mentioned earlier before, each character is, their, is their, a hero in their own story. And what the knights are doing is kind of good in their mind. They're stopping the threat that can s destroy their country. Uh, way thousand years back ago, uh, they gave, they gave uh, powers to their quote-unquote allies and those allies turn on us. Now we're trying to stop that from happening again. What's, what's wrong with oh, that? Oh, I, I get it. So it's <laughs> basically got uh, the um, uh, what do you call it? The Marvel, the current Marvel Comics, um, own their mentality, where basically the, um, the weapon perceives uh, what uh, what the wielder is uh, feeling or thinking as uh, positive. Is that what you're saying? I guess that, like, I mean, uh, if you want to go back to D and D, you can have a lawful good character be a, the bad guy yeah but then you also have have hydra cap building me on here yeah <sighs> yeah but probably if you change the rules maybe there's another way to contextualize this um in studying archetypes there's talk about when a person becomes possessed by that archetype mentally the, think of, say, well, Star Swirl, as we'll bring him back into this, mm -hmm. he thought he was the wise mage. He thought he was the only one who could have good ideas. Uh, you might have the religious zealot who believes that any action they take, no matter how uh, violent or, or morally questionable, is justified because they are the champion for their beliefs. Mm -hmm. You know, everything they do is sanctified. A, he a person gripped by the hero uh, may believe that they're the one destined to make a change in the world, or that they're they'll be the the celebrated they'll be the celebrated champion of the hour, and and doing so they can actually do a great deal of harm. Not being aware, I think these uh, these elements of patriotism see themselves as righteous by default that they above all are the the wisdom and the light in the world and their and that pride has blinded them to the harm they inflict and there and that is why i said that pride is not a virtue oh yeah well pride in Moderation. Anything in excess becomes a vice. That is true. Like honesty. Like being too honest is not good. Yeah, Applejack That's can called... testify to that. Mm -hmm. And also, what being yes. loyal. 
being overly loyal to one person is not good. I mean, like when like Sylvia mentioned before, uh, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. And so I would not say that you you should be able to take pride in your accomplishments. At least I think you should be allowed to take pride in your friends and and family. But if suddenly, if your pride can only come by putting someone else down, now we're suddenly we're going a step too far. That's why I think these elements of uh, patriotism have given way to becoming the elements of nationalism. Yeah, but again, nationalism in and of itself is not bad. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> oh, I gotta say, after four years under the annoying orange, I... <laughs> I, I must disagree. Uh, um, in moderation, in moderation. Well, like I said, I, I... Actually, what is the proper definition of nationalism? Oh, uh, Pardon me you one Google second. that, I'll continue on, because we've been stuck on this for a bit. All right, anywho! Uh, um, yeah, um, <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, yeah, can I continue? Okay, go ahead. Of course. Yeah. So, anyway, this is where we see that the knights are absolutely justified in what they did. They showed to these people nothing but goodwill, and in turn, they sought to destroy them because of Discord's actions. So, yeah, hiding their temples to deactivate their elements was the only thing they could do. Norman, previously you gave uh, Krogan from Mass Effect as an example for what followed, but I think that may have been a bit of an unfair comparison, honestly. Eh. Yeah, you see... Okay, uh... Silver, how much do you know about Mass Effect? Uh, I know that I prefer the blue <laughs> ending. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm just no, gonna... actually, I, I I played Mass Effect 1. Mm -hmm. Never got around to the second. Uh, and I know that the Kroger have a breed... They aren't able to breed. Right, I'm going to explain. They're... Uh, the Krogan were, primi are primi were primitive aliens with highly advanced biology. They, they could regenerate the wounds incredibly fast. They had extra organs so they were able to survive harsh conditions. And they could re reproduce ridiculously fast. And that's why the Salarians saw them as a perfect weapon against giant invasive space bugs. What they didn't know though was that by uplifting them they basically gave cavemen nukes. Mm -hmm. So when the Krogan decided to go on a war path because they didn't, uh, by natural uh, progression, uh, root out their uh, aggression, other aliens were in the right to nuke their planet into an ap apocalyptic wasteland. Where the difference comes is what happens after that. See, the Knights hid other, pl uh, other races' temples and then hid their own home from the rest of the world. However... That didn't impact their their way of life. They just kept on living, forgetting what had happened in the past, and things were just hunky dory in the process. What happened to the Krogan, however, was far far worse. Because uh, this is where we uh, get to what you said. Uh, you probably wanted to say earlier, sir. Because after their planet was nuked, Salarians decided to introduce population control in order to keep them in check by releasing upon the entire race a genetic virus that caused only one in thousand babies to not be stillborn. So they basically destroyed the entire race because they couldn't even rebuild their civilization from scratch. And seeing uh, millions upon millions dead children turns out uh, turns one absolutely despondent in the process. <clears throat> I, Fun times. I, I yeah. mean um uh, technically, nobody really nuked them but themselves. <laughs> didn't yeah. didn't, the, uh, didn't I, entire uh, uh, galactic civilization basically attack them? Oh no! Um, if I if I'm not mistaken, like if I'm trying to remember right, I, I'm gonna just skip this through. Uh, if I if I remember right, uh, they managed to get nuclear weapons and somehow nuke themselves for war. And I think the Salarians uplifted them, and then they started on a warpath, and that's where the STG came in to neuter them. And Silver, you were saying? Well, I found a definition for nationalism. Hmm. So, 
uh, identification with one's own nation and support for its interests, especially to the exclusion or detriment of the interests of other nations. Which they, which they are doing. Huh? Isn't that more like a jingoism? So, um, how so? Hold on, let me just... Let me just Google it just in case, in case I didn't say it right. All right, but anywho, I'm just going to continue on because if not, we're just going to be stuck on page seven. Yeah, hold right. on. I just have one more thing to say. So here we see that the knights actually created Groot slang in order to guard the location of the temple that is in the desert, a.k.a. Zekora's temple. But if that's the case, yeah. why the hell was he attacking the town in the first place? It's almost as if, as if it invited Zekora's group to, the, to find the temple to begin with. Well, the best laid plans of Knights of Harmony and ponies and zebras. Okay, here it is, Jingoism. Basically, Jingoism is nationalist, nationalism in the form of aggressive and proactive foreign policies such as a country's adequacy for the use of threats and or actual force as opposed to peaceful relations and efforts to safeguard what is perceived as its own national interest. That's funny, I... I'm, I'm curious that they use nationalism in the definition because I've got uh, extreme patriotism, <laughs> especially in the form of aggressive or warlike foreign policy. Isn't the uh, aggressive patriotism ultranationalism just? Well, they all do seem to have. Like, I feel like we got a Venn diagram going here. Yeah, you know what? We're like, like, let's just put that away for now. Otherwise, we're gonna be here for a while. So anyway, so. Back to the story. If this flashback was a way to try and get us to sympathize with the knights even just a little bit, I feel like it's come a bit too late. See, one thing that you don't try to do in the writing uh, when trying to sympathize with the villain is that you don't introduce him by either saying the most horrendous thing or committing an act that eliminates any potential chance of redemption. In other words, this feels like Last of Us Part 2 writing. Ah, uh, don't start by killing off one of a beloved main character. <laughs> yeah, and then trying to sympathize uh, with, uh, with the villain. Oh, look, she's petting innocent little puppy. The other main character is not going to kill. But here's the thing with uh, this, like this in general here, it feels like uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Whitley. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Jeremy oh. Whitley here just wrote the story as it is. Um, not really thinking ahead that we're supposed to sympathize with Danu and his uh, pl uh, uh and his country or whatever it is, like whatever. Um, he is written here as a lawful good asshole. Where he's doing the things that he's doing for his uh, country and stopping the threat. That's about it. Like, there's no, oh, we're supposed to sympathize with him or understand him and whatnot. No, 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 no. Uh, whatever we're getting fed right now is just backstory. So we kind of know what's happening and catch up to the old mystery that has been told to us for a very long time. And to be all honest, the way that the story is told... It's not good at all. Yeah, I know exactly. But if there was a way to fix this, then it should have started way back in issue 100. Don't show one of the knights no. who is saying to Rainbow Dash how Equestria is going to fall. It's not even that. Um, if you want to have a good story around this idea and plot, introduce it in season 10, the beginning. Well, technically it did, but it's only one light and one speech bump. It's that's that's not enough. There's not enough to. There's not enough. Like at least you need to have a shadowy figure float about. Like at least tell us or at least show us why. Uh, what what's the current threat going on? I mean, they did that for season three with the book, and yeah, that's about it. But still, at least that's something. Yeah. But basically, uh, if you wanted uh, to much show... much of a something. What you got? Not much of a something, if you ask yeah, me. Yeah, but at least it's something. Now, this one is like, aha, evil person 
pops up episode one hundred, uh, issue one hundred, and tells them like, ah, oh, you'll be destroyed by two issues. Wait, two issues at the end. Uh, you're the good guys, right? Oh fuck, we're gonna die. Well, if if we stick to what uh, the d- design of this uh, two parter was, as I said earlier, don't show the, one of the knights uh, gloating about how they're gonna destroy their enemy, uh, and then in the previous issue, don't show the knight's leader act like a pretentious asshat and have him actually explain the story at that point exactly, and then have Discord pop in completely ignorant to what was just explained. And all the knights lose their shit, at which point all bets are off. And at that point, you have more flexibility to tell a story and have uh, actually have a fulfilling conclusion than a chance to potentially redeem villains instead of the BS that follows. And we're gonna get to that. Well, you, you, okay. you kind of um, got your wish by them explaining what they are and stuff. Uh, and by yeah, but didn't... when when in the in the in the now, final issue now. like now why, was, why, like, why did it take one, one whole issue of waiting before they could explain this? For, I don't it's know padding. Line. Yeah, and you, you kind of got your wish because after this, um, they babble about how um, the elements are used as a shield instead of a weapon, blah, blah, blah. And Cadence comes along with Trixie and Discord. Um, the Danu here, young Danu, sees a mural of Discord showing the evil. And if you take a look, see, there's Chrysalis, there's Discord. I think that could be Scorpion Tail Person. Anybody remember? I know what that is. Uh, Scorpion? Scorpion? Cosmos. Was Scorpion evil? It's Cosmos, Scorpion. Norman. Oh, it's Cosmos. Cosmos. Oh, it's Cosmos, yeah. yeah. Okay, Cosmos. All right. So, anywho, um, Danu sees this and everybody reacts poorly to Discord. Uh, another Tuesday night. And uh, they attack Discord and Cadence pulls up a shield saying, nobody hurts my friends. And Danu just grounds her. I Literally, wonder, <laughs> I wonder if Cadence only has those wings for decoration. Eh. Well, I kind of wonder. I mean, like a bird will try to fly on instinct because that's what a bird does. But a horse is the instinct to gallop, even if you have wings. Mm-hmm. Also, she was a oh god, she was a Pegasus before. She... <sighs> yeah, she was a Pegasus. So unfortunately, that that argument will not work. But. Uh, if horses, their first instinct is to run rather than fly, I can understand. But mostly it's just like, here's Cadence trying to look like a badass, mm-hmm. and it lasts a frame. I mean, she a frame. Undermined. I mean, that's Cadence in a nutshell. <laughs> undermined. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I didn't even see so, that one coming. <laughs> yeah, so did Cadence. <laughs> Well, she definitely didn't. <laughs> oh, boys. But anyway, Silva, you were saying? Well, I'm just saying that Cadence never gets a chance in the spotlight to do something. She's got to be captured. And heck, if Celestia and Luna were here, they'd probably be underground as well. Mm, yep, yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, boys. Anywho, I- I'm just going to continue on. So, with the new grounding cadence um, and rec- uh, demanding that they give Discord up to them so that he would be uh, punished for his crimes, uh, Discord ran away. Oh no! Discord, where are you going? Don't go! No, Discord! So, the knights chase after. Uh, him and the snake cow thing as wait what about the elements Danu just says uh, he was the ruin of our ancestors if we stop this uh, elements and let him escape that we, it will mean nothing and mm, he, he does make a point he does make a good point so 
uh, we see Applejack and Twilight chasing after, and Trixie stops them and says, Twilight, 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 I can't believe you fall for the illusionary power of the great and powerful Trixie. And Discord just says, since when do I run when I can t- uh, teleport by snapping a finger? And Twilight just says, okay, cool. Uh, could you bring back Cadence? And she and he does. And we get to see, um, I'm guessing the reference is Clint Eastwood, right? Mm, could be. I don't know if that's the poncho on the head of the good, the bad, and the ugly. ugly. I think or- that could be it, right? Looks like strong resemblance. But anywho, um, after bamfing out of the caverns, um, Cadence kicks Discord off and just comments that ah, it was like my wedding day again. And now the elements um, strike a plan to kind of stop the um, knights. We see that the knights are all confused and whatnot and just um, being being attacking each other because um, the water boy water boy so there's a boy oh okay yeah so anyway uh, the fish squid person uh, just mocks Danu because he kind of um, let the draconicus go not really got away but um, overshadowed their master plan of destroying the elements uh, but they kind of bicker for a bit until um, someone tells them that, oh, you shouldn't really fight and listen to the big scary bird. And it's revealed that this Discord, oh no, Discord is pooping the nose of Danu. And he tr- multiplies himself and run away. Oh no. So, uh, the does anybody remember what this guy's name is? In the kilt? Uh, in the kilt. Uh, one sec. It's hard to keep track of all these guys. Funny enough, the uh, squid-shark hybrid, their name is never stated. Not at all. Ever. Is it once. in the wiki? Really? Not that I'm aware. Uh, okay. Uh, but I haven't really looked sorry, at that. Uh, sorry. Uh, my bad. Uh, I'm looking at the wiki right now, and the kilt guy is Balor. Huh, all right. His name is Balor. Uh, I'm also... Tr- Hello, Balor. I'm, I'm trying to take a look, see if I can catch the squid shark person thingy. And... Oh, yeah. Uh, you know. that, the name's never stated. That name is never... Name's never stated, so... Oh, uh, yeah. I got no idea how the wiki pulled this, but uh, its name is Manhan. Um, man... 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 M-E-N... Man? N E H mana mana man mana mana. Oh. Hold on. Anyway, M A N N A H. M A N N A H. Anyway, a uh, Balor is named after a Celtic demon. Ooh, scary. He can uh, now. Apparently, this demon was Cyclopean and could kill just by looking at you. So, Bal- but Balor can see an element's power and mark them for termination. Oh, that's bad. Wait, hold on. That's true. Like at the start of a uh, previous issue, when uh, before the knights charge, uh, he calls Balor. You can see the uh, magic of elements, and then he says uh, he did. And well, hold on. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you must find all within this place that carry that magic and snuffed it out. So yeah, basically he's a magic tracker. Mm-hmm. And also element of magic. And this is what confuses him because there's one, two, three, four, five, six discord. And when Danu asks which real. one, yep, when Danu is asks which one is the real one, they're all real. They're just really good disguise and. They break up and chase after them. So we first meet up with oh man, the Aztec creature thingy namey. Uh Wiki. Just call it the Aztec. Oh man. Just call it the Aztec. 
Yeah, and this, uh, if you guys can get me a name ASAP, then I, I got no idea. So, anywho, um, uh, the it chases after Discord to a what you call this alley, and it says that haha, you've been tricked. There's always been the plan, and now me and my gang are going to beat you up in Crime Alley. I hope you don't have any pearls, pearl necklaces. Yep. <laughs> Wait, uh, hold on. Uh-huh. I just noticed something. What? Uh, go back to when... Uh, to the page where Discord summons Cadence back and then he runs away and then Twilight form- uh, sells the formulator plan. Look among the crowd who's there, but doesn't appear in the rest of this comic after that. You mean... Uh, sun... Star- Starlight? Starlight. She's just there. I just realized that. Well, she was in the previous issue trying to help get everyone where they need to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then she doesn't even uh, turn up in any of these parts where everyone's helping fight. Uh, well, the, the 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 goal for this one is having the uh, elements beat up the other elements. She could be just in the background saving people. I don't know. I just wonder why was she necessary to be put there in the first place. Mm, she was with Trixie. And Trixie yeah, is there too. On. Anywho, um, carrying on. Uh, Twilight just says, we'll beat you up. Simple as that. <laughs> and we move on to the students where um, Ocellus is being chased down by the... Squid fish thing, man, 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 man. and then um, when uh, could I suggest that instead of being confused by all these characters, we just sort of say that each team beats them up real fast? Yes, uh, yeah, might as well. Yeah, but it's it's the way that they beat them up is really cool because um, Squid Boy here comes attacking and em- sorry, not Ember. Um, Smolder just says, "Ah, oh, man, that's not cool. I can't fight water." But uh, Silver can. And she just hops right to it and gives the Squid Boy a really good slap in the face. And Yona finishes it by doing bowling. Yay. Then we go fighting Ghost Bird here. And it seems that Ghost Bird here is tricked by the classic elements. And they have boxed them in and they're throwing potions to block the mind control effect. And yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they beat him up. <laughs> now, this part here is a bit eh. Where is Danu throwing stones at the ponies and Mod just saying that, okay, um... This is just sand stone, aim three inches to the right, and it'll be fine. Like, and we see Cadence here just blowing up rocks, which is kind of cool. Yeah, and using um, what you call this mod to direct the um explosion point. But anywho, um, we see that Danu is pissed off and kind of starts an earthquake, and the main six runs off to where the others are. So, yeah, uh, that, that, they, that didn't end well for the group. And we see that the main six are ready to fight Danu. So is the legends and also the students. And we see Twilight trying to um, reason with Danu, telling him that uh, it's never too late to be friends and stuff and Danu just says nah man we've been friends before and that been our downfall uh, never again we'll blah 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 we've been doing this whole circle for a while now you know the you know the shindig uh, Ugh, this is all bullshit a whole lot of bullshit like this entire speech that he is and it makes no sense like the only reason why this happened in the first place was because Discord was an asset as usual and it had nothing to do with that's just the nature of things because other elements were completely fine with living together. 
At this point, this isn't even the case for we fear outside the world than actually just being the target. But still, it's what he believes in. And like I mentioned before, we've been around that circle for a while now, and I don't want to repeat it. So, anywho, um, it seems to be kind of working where, okay, maybe Danu is a bit bullish in his reaction, but maybe if I hear Tyler out for a bit, maybe it could work, you know what I mean? It might work, I, I, I guess. But, oh no, it seems that um, that spike that is around is not Spike, but Balor, and he absorbed all the magic from Twilight and Star Swirl, and gives it to Danu. And Danu just says, lol, I changed my mind, now I destroy town, lol. And we see that, oh, the creatures, ponies, are running away from Cantalot, and we see that uh, buildings are burning, and the ponies are hurt. But wait, what's that? It seems that the bird folks are helping. So it's the doggy people and also the zebras and cats. Equestria's allies are here. Ooh, that's awesomeness. Now. Uh, Somebody has to save Andy Price. <laughs> also, Katie Cook and Heather Breckle and more. But anywho, uh, yes. So now, near, at the end of the... We're near the end. And we see that Danu says, No, this cannot be. I must destroy... We must protect our home. And... The student six says, Nope, not so fast. You guys... You are bad people and we're here to stop you. And Danu says, You and what army? And we see a panel later. The entire element of harmony group there's a lot of them and they rainbow blast Danu and stop him and Danu got a stern scolding and sent home without dinner actually they never do find out what they do with the Knights of Harmony now that they're defeated are they imprisoned are they sent back home are they Stripped of their own elements? Nope, silver. Yeah, nothing, nada, ne nothing. Yeah. Also, question, what happened to, what was it, Balog? What happened to him? He just disappears after this. Uh, he, he used the strategy of, run away, run away! <sighs> and yeah, and then the comic ends the next two pages. Yep, and the comic ends by... Um, Twilight just saying to the leaders of all the countries, well, not the leaders, but the quote-unquote leaders for elements saying that, yo guys, um, today has been really a mess, but you know what? Uh, this taught me that we should make an alliance where uh, we don't try to kill each other with our elements and try to be good friends. How about it? And everybody agrees, and yay, coming ends, and oh no, there's an evil coming out, and she's early. And it seems that... No fanfare whatsoever. Uh, and... We have to end this series ASAP because we have another new cash cow to milk, even though this one hasn't gone dry yet. And, see. and with that, uh, we get a message from the crew saying that the past and present crew of MLP Comic would like to say thank you to our readers for the past nine years and for teaching us that truly friendship is magic. And the pony adventure is just beginning. And we see Cadence and Shining Armor have a little kiss. And yay! Funs. Funsies. Anywho, that was long. And I'm going to pause. And I'm going to finish it here. So, Silver, what do you think? Everything, man. I well, it's meant to bring... Every hmm? uh, I just have a question. Are we going to do... Uh for uh, for, uh, for I don't are we gonna do a uh, final thoughts for this two part issue first and then for season as a whole? Oh no, we'll just everything like we'll just wrap it up all here. I... Uh, okay. <laughs> well, what to say? I mean, I didn't really feel a strong connection to these Knights of Harmony. They're just the bad guys at the end. 
But I'm also painfully aware that human malware and corporate uh, corporate uh, directives really undermine the flow of this season. So, unfortunately, I don't know. We'll always be tantalized by the story we could have had versus the story that came out. That is unfortunate. I think the Knights do represent what can happen when you take a positive concept to an ex- its extreme and the negatives therein. As a cap off to all the changes that these other, uh, we've seen in these other countries, it's far too sudden. And, well, it, ju- it just doesn't really feel like an earned conclusion. But I do think it's the best they could have done with the time and resources available. So I'm not bitter, I'm not celebrating, but you know, I enjoyed the ride of uh, the IDW comics overall. Mm-hmm. And and that's all I got. Silver, as for season ten, in a nutshell, mm, much the same. We got to explore new places. Each one had its own opportunities for story and exploration. I'm actually kind of sad that it was that they didn't tackle this until the final season. But them's the breaks. True. But hey, they say that this is not the end. There's more. <laughs> ah, God damn it. Uh, anywho. Well, I figure, but, I figure Chrysalis emerging is the setup for My Little Pony Transformers crossover. Uh, could be. Yeah, it makes sense. <gasps> Ooh, that makes a lot of sense. Sorry, it just popped in my head. <laughs> So wait, you were just patronizing me before you realized that? No, I mean, like, it's one of those things. I know, you're saying, oh, that, <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Oh, wait, that really does make no, sense. No, it's, oh. no, it's, it's, it's like, Poopy. it, it, it suddenly clicked. It, it clicked really hard because I'm thinking like, oh, Chrissy, let escape. But since she escaped, does it, that makes no sense. But because of the way that the comic was released, like, like the Transformers thing came out a while back before this one. I never thought about it uh, linking up to this one. Like, this, what, finished in 2001, and the Transformers comic, when? Um, that was wild, right? Yeah, it's been yeah, a little so while. I, I never put two and two together. Well, any which way, those are my All thoughts. Right. And, and Jacob, what about you? <sighs> well, to say season 10 ending was rushed and poorly written would be an understatement, despite, as Silver said, it's human malware. More so than the, the season as a whole. I think the biggest issue that comes down to it is the villains who were only introduced in uh, issue 100, like t- three issues before the whole uh, story ended. That's the family are probably some of the worst established villains in any piece of media. It's, they're comparable to Mass Effect 3, Cosmic Child, Kaguya from Naruto, and uh, Apokalimon from Digimon Season 1, and I could probably name a few more, but I'm gonna live at that. Like, these guys are supposed to be the biggest threat than any other MLP villain that was introduced throughout the series run, and they got taken out like absolute chumps. So... Each of the knights has enough power to destroy each. Uh, sorry, no, forget it. I, I I'm gonna I'm not gonna go through this. But I do have a small complaint that the Aztec knight got taken off our screen by Twilight and Main Six, and later we see that's also the case with the blue snake samurai that gets taken out by Discord. I mean, it's Discord. You don't really need more. Con- <laughs> you don't really need more explanation than that. It's Discord. Yeah. I think the problem was that the original Knights didn't make when they decided to split up uh, to fight the, find the real one, and that was basically when they were already doomed from the start, anyway. But of course, uh, the Discord blame. Uh, I don't know. I'm just kind of kind of getting tired that he gets blamed for all the bad things that happen and never receives any punishment for it. And I may be saying this simply because I watch too much DWK, but at some point you just can't take it anymore. <sighs> anyway. Yeah. Anyway, that's what I got for the finale. 
<sighs> but as a season intent as a whole, where well, there's many problems that burden season 10 uh, altogether, and human lover or not, it's got poor world building, a lot of retcons, character assassination, and it's got the repeated plot points. Uh, in one of the tweets, when asked what the inspiration behind the story of season 10 was, Jeremy Whitley said that he wanted to show that there were different types of friendships in the world. But they really clearly are, because throughout the whole story they are shown that they're exactly, exa exactly the same friendships, just different races, but everyone else is the same. Everybody's got the tree of harmony, everybody's got the element of magic, honesty, kindness, laughter, generosity and loyalty. And even that can't remain consistent because uh, in the issue 100, Bird King and his completely different elements. And then we also have the Knights of Harmony themselves, who have half of them are completely different ones and some of them are in virtue, as I mentioned before. Now, I did once ask uh, Jeremy Whitley, in hindsight, if uh, the <clears throat> Koof thing didn't ha uh, Sorry. If the Koof thing, thing happened and the cutting down of season 10 was... If he thought... Uh, if he thought it would, it would have worked better if he had written it to be mostly slice of life stories instead of what we got. And he said, and I quote... Frankly, I would rather aim high and miss than aim low, and no, I never tried. So, I'm a bit confused on that. I mean, when Jeremy Whitley makes good slice of life stories that everybody loves, that means he's not even trying to write? I, I, I don't know what he was trying to say. Now, as a writer, I'll give him prompt, part of the prompt for sticking to his guns and trying uh, to finish a project that he started. But as a, but as a writer and a reader, I just can't, uh, I just can't take this because I wasn't satisfied with the product. There were ways some of the things could have been avoided, but unfortunately, the core problem is the MacGuffins and the story that was uh, a repeat over and over. So I have to say, uh, and with a personal bias on the site. I think the Corazark was probably the worst in this case. Firstly, because it serves as a railed map, because even if the arcs uh, after it weren't cut down in half, the main plot points remain the same. Secondly, because its biggest. Uh, the Kura's comment is the biggest reflection of Equestria. From having four princes to Equestria's four princesses. Down to every creature in Farasi having a cutie mark, even though the show states no other creature has a cutie mark except for ponies and zebras aren't considered ponies any more than the horses of Saddle Arabia. Uh, and last but not least, and <laughs> I'm pretty sure you were expecting this to go uh, this way, and I'm going to, but you're now you're not gonna hear me talk about this. Uh, later again, so I'm just going to finish it. <sighs> Zekora. She was probably the most butchered character in the season, which started with her acting abrasive and angry, saying to others they don't know any better and how awful her home was, and then it was revealed uh, that she was a giant clare this whole time, and lastly the whole attempt to try and one-up up her teacher to show that her species can use magic and then tell her friends you may be fine with being boring but I'm not. <sighs> I'm sorry but this is a core we're talking about, one of the kindest, generous and helpful characters in the show. And what the comic showed was not her. She was introduced in the series as being spited by ponies because she was different and she should have every reason not to take them kindly after that, but she still decided to help them when Apple Bloom asked ask her for help. And even after the main six trashed her home, she had every right to be angry at them. And she, she was still more than willing to help them. I mean, most of the limited characterization that she received in the show came from the fact that she's a shaman. 
and I'm not, uh, I don't mean just the original name while she was still under development or the fact that she's a witch doctor living in a tree house, but also the character ar archetype. And this goes back to your, uh, I'm gonna use a reference from one of your older series, Silver, the archetype ones that you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, the shaman archetype uh, is that of a healer and a, sto a storyteller. So, for, from what little present she had in the comics, and as much as I didn't like that she was just being used as a tool to fix problems of others, she was still true to, to her archetype. And of course, then we have the Rainbow Dash and the Really Bad Day, where Zakora acts as a storyteller. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna go a shameless plug for a moment on uh, the sto the fan fiction story that I'm writing, Thermal Rising, because the core is a big part of that story, and uh, I make sure to keep her true to her archetype, where she acts as a healer to the problem of others, but at the same time she's also a storyteller, where her sto where she tells a story from a moment of her childhood growing up in her homeland. So we get to see her grow up as well as seeing what her various lo <clears throat> we get to see various locations of her homeland, what they're like, and thus uh, it provides world building for the setting in the process. But she all she's also not a one note character as we see her joys, her ills, and slowly see her backstory and the reason why she ended up in the quester in the first place. Okay, shameless plug over. <clears throat> Back to the review. Uh, okay, her being the element of magic made no sense. She's never shown to have desire to study magic. She only wanted to um, to help others. If anything, she should have either been an element of kindness or an element of generosity. But if that were the case, we couldn't make a direct parallel to main six. So basically, what really frustrates me about season 10 of Zekora uh, is the fact that she gets reduced from her own unique character and is transformed into what basically amounts to a second-rate Twilight. <coughs> but, uh, and so, uh, I'm just gonna finish on this. Uh, even if season 10 wasn't cut down, I honestly feel like it wouldn't have improved the story. I mean, I think that this season would have fared far better if it was oriented on Slice of Life to try and fill up the gaps in the transition between Twilight's coronation and 20 years later time skip. I mean, and the depressing part is that Jeremy Whitley would have been perfect for this. <sighs> and look, I, I know uh, throughout this... Uh, I know I've shown no shortage of my disdain for season 10 over the course of the past few months that I've been with you guys on this podcast, and I'll admit that there are a few rotten necks that Jeremy Whitley's made during his run on the series, like, for example, the Pets and Kelpie story, Siege of the Crystal Empire, and Spike and the Friends Forever. But most of his other works were actually top-notch. I like Return of Tempest Shadow, Nightmare Nights, and Legends of Magic, and I think he could have done a whole lot more to make the ending of of a 10-year comics run series feel more fulfilling and satisfying. But, as it stands, that's not the case. So, I don't know. Uh, I'm just gonna finish it on this. Uh, I'm gonna take advice for you, Norman, you, that you make made the... Uh, a few weeks back, when we were, I don't know, at what story point. One good thing about season 10 is that you can just remove it as Sillor would say, CONTINUITY! <laughs> and I think that's for the best, because transi transitioning into G5 comics, if season 10 is considered canon, then it makes what happens in the new series on the who the ho on how the whole world collapsed even worse than without it. <laughs> All right, you then. But what we won't forget is that you use continuity, which is my tag. There you go. You owe me a quarter. <laughs> oh, no. Damn it. Licensing. <laughs> All right, you then. That's right. I'm pulling a YouTube oh, no. on you. <laughs> that, that was 
No, that was a lot of mine, Jacob. Uh, yeah, it's been building up <laughs> for a long time now, but I'm clean. I'm finally free of this. You say until we Norman. review G5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, Norman, bring us home. All right, then. And as for me, um, the whole story for this one, 100 and, uh, 100, 101 and 102, it's interesting. Uh, we get to see how the new bad guys are, the way they react and whatnot. And it's fascinating. Uh, it's it's a story in how poor setup can lead to poor character relations and whatnot. So it's 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 not their best. Like honestly speaking, going through it the first time was hey it's fun. Um, then going through it again, like okay, I, I can see the flaws and whatnot but hey it's still fun and i think that's important like going in and just reading it for the funsies not really taking too many things too seriously granted almost great now you know just scorch or a a quarter what 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 is his gimmick (laughs) taking things too seriously ah boys but anywho um yeah all in all like you guys are deep in it where you guys know that oh uh because of the human malware there's um issues with stuff and whatnot i here got no idea what's even going on in the background I, i'm just taking things at face value so that shows me well i know i i think i can be considered as the casual reader in this uh scenario here oh here that is a filthy Yay. casual perfect good job Get, get off our raid no. group. Ostracize him. No. But but anywho. Shun. Shun him. <laughs> but but anywho. Um, as for season 10, I, I do agree with you, Jacob, that it feels like it could have been way better. It could have been way better than what we got. Um, Size of life could have probably worked. But the, the problem with having slice of life or... What was the original plan for this? Like, were they supposed to put in how many issues, by the way? I think each uh, each uh, storyline was supposed to have four issues, if I recall. So each story basically as long basically as long as the chorus. All right. So basically, each story country has four issues. Size of life is probably one or two. So okay, uh, if they, if oh, actually the the pinky cheese. Uh, the story about the the moss has two issues. Yeah, so it's like one or th- so. Size of life is one or two, and um, proper story is four. Uh, that could have changed a lot. Like that could have been a lot better in terms of telling the story. But hey, um, we got what we got, and it was okay. And with comic continuity, uh, continuity, it could just be um, thrown to the wayside for something else in the future. And I'm guessing that's what happened in G5. Am I right, Silver? What? Actually, I've, it's now becoming something of a must-read. What? Season 10? No, uh, the comics for season, for Gen 5. I... Oh, man. You know, I'm tempted to open a discussion for the future asking... What the hay is up with G5? Well, you, you get a lot of commentary uh, on that. Yeah, I guess. Like, probably. We'll, we'll set that up. We'll set that up. But anywho, yeah, I'm done. I like comic. Comic's good. Comic's fun. Go read. Oh, uh, boy. So, anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsgmail.com. You can reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? On uh, Twitter, DeviantArt, and YouTube under MLP Silver Quill, or doing a search for Silver Quill after the fact. And uh, th- my YouTube panel, my YouTube page rather, has links to both Patreon and Kofi if you'd like to support my reviews. Awesome, awesome, awesome. 
uh, go do so, guys, because as content creators, it's always nice if people do support us. Uh, Jacob, where can the good people find you? Uh, you can find me on Deviant Art under the username Yakafon Torkar, uh, under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Tomo Rising, you can find it on Tinkfisher.net. And if, in, if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the Tales of the Ashes.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PrettyLive.com. There's a lot of also's. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank... You, Jacob, Lucky Knight, my stuff like, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Queen. I'm Jacob. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. <laughs>